right, so I'm gonna just give you a series of words, uh -oh. just asking you, what's your immediate reaction when you hear the following? Race to the top. Unnecessarily confusing. Privatization. Um, it's, it's, it's a solution looking for a problem. Barack Obama. Inspiring and disappointing. Teachers unions. Can be great partners, um, and like school boards, can also um, you know, be destructive. Teach for America. Met some wonderful people, who educators who have gone through Teach for America, but uh, arrogance and at this point, dangerous. Michelle Ree. Don't know her personally, unnecessarily divisive. Testing. We test way too much with bad tests. Accountability. It is essential to have accountability, but it's got to be the right kind of developmental accountability. Education policy. A misunderstood term that um, is used oftentimes as an excuse or a barrier. My name's Sam Shaltain. I'm a writer and an educator. I've lived in D.C. for 14 years, and I'm lucky enough to be able to travel around the country working with and in amazing schools. So it may look like nighttime, but it's actually 5.45 in the morning, and I'm on my way to Montgomery County, just outside of D.C. A million people live in Montgomery County. Two-thirds of them are white but of the 150,000 students, two-thirds are children of color. It's a lot more diverse than, than people give it credit for because when they think of Montgomery County, they think of the affluence primarily. So, in other words, it's a place filled with great promise and great challenges depending upon how the adults choose to negotiate it. Imagine what your job would be like if every day you were making decisions that impacted over 150,000 young people in a community that's filled with million dollar townhomes, PhD professors, and folks living in abject poverty. How do you make decisions that account for all of those kids and all of those needs? Turn right onto Chatham Road, then turn right onto Blackthorn Street. Today, we're gonna get a chance to learn what it's like to be the superintendent of a county that's filled with all of that promise and all of those challenges. We're here. There he is. Hey. How you see it. So what's the routine? When did you decide that you wanted to become an educator? I always knew I would do something in public service. Uh, I always liked working with kids, but I actually kind of fell into it. After college, lived in kibbutz for six months, uh -huh. and then came home and couldn't get a job because it, the economy was so bad. I ended up working in a residential treatment center for kids coming out of jail. And um, that's when I decided to go into education. At what stage did you decide you wanted to actually be the, the superintendent? After a few years of working with severely emotionally disturbed adolescents in New York City, you realize how broken the system is. And so I felt like there's got to be a way to start ch changing the system, uh -huh. uh, which led me to Harvard, to the Urban Superintendents Program. And, I, and then I was like, you know what? I want to be a high school principal. So, and then never ended up being a principal. Just got. Uh, into central office jobs and found my way to the superintendency. I hope you chose enough weight that they're going to see what you're lifting. That's right. My, my reputation will shatter. So do you always get up at 5.30 every day? Sometimes 5. Why not sleep in? You know, I started doing it um, when my daughter was born. So that was 11 years ago. And it soon became something that enabled me, like every day I'd done something for myself. Yeah. And nobody could touch me during that time. 
so it's become very valuable. So I'm guessing you don't think about work at all when you're here? Or do you kind of I always think about work. Yeah. 